Hello and thank you for joining me for another episode of the Finish More Music podcast. So we are officially out in Austin now, uh, myself, Mrs. M and our little sausage DJ. This is our permanent home now, or rather uh, Austin is. The environment that I'm recording this podcast is the flat that we're in the apartment for the next couple of months, hopefully not much longer than that. But we're very much in this transitional period at the moment of having arrived in the UK and just trying to figure things out and find our way through to a point where we've got our home built, we've got all our transport, we've got everything we need, I've got my new studio and all of that good stuff. So A part of this journey has involved backing ourselves to go all in and figure things out, to find solutions along the way. And we've had a few kind of testing and challenging moments just in the first kind of 10 days, in fact, in the first three days of being here. And that's what I want to talk to you about. And just this underlying idea of backing yourself to go all in and figuring it out versus worrying and thinking about problems and overthinking things and not moving forward with your life. Because then really the only way you're ever going to fail at what you're shooting for is to stand still and worry about what might happen instead of moving forward and relying on action creating clarity and when you get that clarity backing yourself to figure it out because you always have done because you're here right now and any problems you've had any illnesses any pain any difficulties any anxiety any worries you've got a way through it because here you are right now and you've been stronger than everything that's gone before and you'll be stronger than everything that comes at you in the future. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our journey, uh, one of the big challenges that we came up across along the way and how we worked our way through it. And before I kick off, I do want to just uh, point out that if you haven't been sort of consistently listening to the podcast, we've had some absolutely killer killer guests on recently. So just last week in uh, the last episode, which was 179, we had a gentleman by the name of Adrian Bragger, who is a DJ and is also uh, a label owner of the excellent label Magician on Duty. And we've had so much amazing feedback about this episode. Thank you if you've reached out and hit me up on uh, DM on Instagram. Ultimately, what happened was Adrian kind of busted a whole ton of myths that hold people back from sending their music out to labels. Again, a lot of these beliefs and fears that hold people back. And he really pulled back the curtains on this stuff. And um, I've had a lot of messages about how people are a lot more confident sending their music to labels, how they're going to get their music out there because they've been sitting on it kind of a little bit worried about the unknown. It's an incredible interview. He really turned up and brought his A game. So a huge thank you once again to Adrian. If you haven't checked that out, do jump back to last week's episode after this and give it a listen because it's uh, really full of gold. We've obviously also had Tony Coleman, Tim Engelhart, Chris Liebing, David Penn, Josh Butler. So a real who's who of people who are at the very, very top of their game across a a ton of underground music disciplines, you know, from your techno to your classic house, your tech house, drum and bass, melodic techno. But really, I think it's so much more than the genres. It's when you peel back to it, there are so many similarities in ethoses, the way that people approach the scene, approach their creativity as well as their own unique perspectives and experience. So if you have missed those, I recommend checking them out because we've been absolutely blessed to have such amazing guests. And once again, a huge thank you to them. And actually, we've been on fire inside at FMM as well because we welcomed a whole bunch of excited new members who are ready to take the first real big steps on their music production journey, smashing out the tunes, already seeing the quality rise, huge breakthroughs. And as a fantastic treat for the community, we had uh, Quiver come in and give a masterclass last week, which was absolutely exceptional. He literally opened up three projects on three different tracks, one kind of breaks, one a really dark sort of breaks track, one more electro-y, also a more 4-4 driven house kind of track. 
And he was so transparent in the way that he thinks about music, why he makes the decisions that he makes, as well as all the good stuff, all the technical gubbins on the, you know, the different process inside and sound design, as well as the composition, how he arranges music. It was an absolute buzz. And I think where I'm going with this kind of initial um, piece of the puzzle here is that there are so many people out there who are so... um, forthcoming with their knowledge and their experience and they're so willing to share and to help people and I think so often we imagine that these artists live in some kind of ivory tower and they wouldn't give us the time of day but actually they're so willing and they love to help and to share and to contribute and to give and it's something we've noticed actually since we've been here in Texas in uh, Austin there's this thing, right? It's uh, this um, Southern hospitality, they call it in the US. And my God, it's been absolutely incredible. It really doesn't matter where we go. We're finding we'll be in the supermarket and we'll ask someone a question because things are called different stuff over here. They've got different names and we kind of been joking. We're walking around the supermarket with our phones, like saying like, what's the USA version of X? What do they call Y in a, a US supermarket? And like we ask people and people just stop and they'll, they'll spend their time to help and to talk through things. And then they're curious about what we're doing. And and they give us more perspectives and more help. We went into a bank here uh, the other day to talk to a mortgage advisor. And this particular bank, um, the various sort of mortgage products that they have weren't really for us. And the mortgage advisor figured that out inside of two minutes. And then what? He sat with us for an hour. I kept thinking, God, you know, I'm feeling a little bit impolite here. I think we should probably kind of bail. But he was just like, what can I help you with? You know, what do you need help with here? I'm going to, you know, contact a few other people who might have the kind of products that you want. Oh, yeah, and there's this and and there's financing on that. And have you thought about this? And what area are you going to live in? Oh, here's my advice. I like this. Absolutely incredible. So... Been really blessed with some, you know, encounters with some incredible people here as well as artists in the scene. Um, But what I'm about to talk about is an encounter with some people who weren't particularly incredible um, and how Anna and I dealt with it in a way that we would not have dealt with it if you rolled back the clock, I think. 10 years, maybe even sooner, potentially. And I hope that the lessons that we learned that sort of brought us to this place where we move through this quite seamlessly will be valuable to you in terms of music but also in all aspects of your life because your music and your creativity does not exist in a bubble everything we do in our lives affects us creatively affects your output whatever you know you're almost certainly a a music maker of some um some type if you're listening to this but in fact not necessarily so we've had people who are videographers and um uh painters and people reach out who are are taking value from the episodes which are amazing but whatever your creative endeavor what you'll discover is that all the different aspects of your life will impact it and your creativity and how you feel about your art will impact all of the other areas of your life as well so let's uh, get stuck into this uh, story. So Anna and I came over on the plane and one kind of little aside, one little lesson I guess is that we'd kind of had it in our head for quite some time that DJ at Little Miniature Dashand was going to kick off on the plane massively. And we had a, a meet up, our Finnish More Music community meet up in London. Again, amazing people all in a room together. People traveled from all over the world. Literally, we had people getting on the plane from the US, all over Europe to be in a room to hang out. Uh, DJs playing incredible music all night. We had live performance as well. Uh, we had Ange, who's an amazing singer, and Mark and Vegar perform live. Absolutely incredible, um, incredible session. And I was pretty much telling a load of people who were saying, oh gosh, you know, how, how are you thinking about going overseas? And I said, oh, it's so exciting, but I reckon our dog's going to kick off massively on the plane and upset everybody. And this is this classic uh, phrase, right? Worrying works. Everything I worry about never happens. Not a peep. The air hostess came up to us and said, best behaved dog I've ever seen on a plane. And I've been doing this job for years. Absolutely incredible. Anyways, we arrive in um, 
in the US in Austin and we had to go via quite a convoluted route because we would not have DJ put in the hold. We wanted him in the cabin with us and that meant that the only airline that was available was Air Canada, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, but we did need to go from Heathrow to Toronto, Toronto to Houston, rent a car and drive for three hours or two and a half hours to Austin. Whereas if the little sausage wasn't with us, we could have just done London, Austin, beautiful, here we are. So as you can imagine, we arrived quite tired and we actually, there were a number of delays along the way. There was quite, I think it was about a six hour layover in the end in Toronto. And we arrived at, I think it was about midnight and we decided, look, let's book a dog friendly hotel rather than do the drive now and we'll get to Austin the next day which we did and we were still quite tired from the travel and all the packing we uh, we'd somewhat underestimated what we needed to do combined with the fact that we had a whole bunch of challenges um, with selling our property which you, you often get right people say it's a super stressful experience and everything was plain sailing until near the end where it was more solicitors being a pain in the backside than anything else um, just caused things to drag on to the point that when we did come to packing up our worldly goods and throwing things out and selling stuff we were kind of left with a 48 hour period to do probably 50 to 60 percent of it and that's an entire lifetime's worth of stuff so Anna and I had two hours of sleep before the cab came to pick us up to take us to the airport uh, to, to fly out to Austin and start our new life so we were still quite tired and we arrive in Austin and we booked an Airbnb that looked really nice, had some really good reviews online, as you can imagine, you're not likely to book it. And um, this was going to be our home for two months. Now, Anna dropped me and the sausage off and she had to go and take the car back because we'd only rented it for a couple of days. And when I really started looking around, I was like, this place is pretty run down. The air conditioning didn't seem to be doing a very good job. And I felt pretty hot and bothered in this place. And Austin at this time of year is hot. And May has been uh, particularly hot. It's normally June, July and August, I think, which are a scorchio. We've had uh, triple figures um, in, in Fahrenheit on a number of days already. And it was particularly hot. And I was like... My gosh, is this like the deal? And I'd gone in there and all the blinds and all the curtains and everything was pulled. And then I just started noticing that this place was dirty, like filthy dirty. So Anna arrived back and I said, look, you know, we've got a few problems here and I didn't want to kind of call you whilst you were on the road and, and trouble you with this because, you know, there's not a lot you can do until you have a look yourself. But this is far from the cleanliness that we're used to in an Airbnb and we probably need to sort this out. So Anna jumped on the phone and spoke to the host of the Airbnb and they didn't seem particularly concerned. They weren't really up for doing very much and there was no apology about it and the guy literally said, yeah, we'll get some cleaners there when we can, just send us some photos of the, the issues. And when we started taking photos, it was you're talking like bowls in the cupboard that are still caked with food, food spilt like all over the fridge, all over the handle, dust, dirt, like, and I'm talking thick stuff with like loads of hairs in it and just really grim somewhere you would not want to be and somewhere that wasn't hygienic at all and the yard uh look at me with my Americanisms already the garden the yard um was like overgrown and when DJ went out to go to the toilet he came in and he had fleas on him and we were like, God, we know it's hot in Austin, but is this like the norm? Does everyone have fleas in their back garden because it's so hot? And so we start researching and checking things out and we realize that actually, no, this place is just a dump. The people don't care. Um, they don't care about us. They don't care about people, I would say, in general as guests to leave it in this place. And keep in mind, they knew we were coming for two months, which is great for an Airbnb host. I mean... You're laughing, brilliant. Someone's booked the pad up for two months consistently. Amazing stuff. 
Um, and they didn't really care. And so we called Airbnb, who were absolutely amazing. And they said, look, have they given you a, a timeline on when the cleaning team is going to come? And we said, no, they just said, you know, they'll, they'll get them around when they can. And so we thought, well, we better lodge an official complaint. And rather than just talk on the phone and do it through WhatsApp, we'll actually go through Airbnb with our requests. And then sure enough, we get a, a message through saying the cleaning team will come in the morning. Now, pretty much at that point, Anna and I looked at each other and said, okay, we think we're going to be out of here. Unless something miraculous happens tomorrow, we'll give them a shot to put this right. Um, it's time to get out of here. Now, 10 years ago, I'm not so sure we would have done that because picture the, the scene. There is literally us with our rental car and I'd obviously got a new one at the airport. We got our dog with us. Uh, we'd have nowhere to live whatsoever. We've got our worldly belongings in six big heavy suitcases, hand luggage, all of this stuff. I think we'd have probably thought, let's see if we can work this out and hold this out. We'd even sort of looked at it and said, well, we could you know, don our rubber gloves and clean this place ourselves. <laughs> um, and we're like, no, that, you know, that's not us anymore. We're going to back ourselves to get out of here and figure it out. So the next morning, the cleaning team came and Anna and I sort of left the property and said, we'll go to Starbucks and um, we'll come back when they're finished. And we got to Starbucks and we're like, oh God, we've left something that we really need. Uh, in the Airbnb. So Anna went back to get it and it was a Mexican um, cleaning crew, they're called here. Um, and they were wonderful, wonderful people. And Anna went in and saw that what they were doing, they were walking around with their phones and looking at the pictures that Anna had sent, like the examples of some of the filth in the place. And they were looking at the pictures and only cleaning the bits that were in the photos. And we'd officially, you know, sort of said, look, this place needs a deep clean. This is like really dirty. And so Anna, um, being the smart cookie that she is, she's um, able to speak Spanish as well as Portuguese, as well as English to a very high level ac across the board. And um, she started talking to him and saying, you know, oh, we'd asked for this to have a deep clean and it looks like you're just following the pictures. And they said, well, yeah, that's what we've been told to do. And it turned out that they spoke to their boss who said, well, the Airbnb host has only paid us to do this. They're not, they're not prepared to pay us to do a proper job. And the cleaning crew were amazing. They said, look, we'll, we'll fly around and give this a once over with the time we've got out of kindness and compassion to Anna and I. They weren't doing it for the person who was ultimately paying they were like this is how long we can afford and we'll go for it and they really really did now Anna reported this back to me and we just phoned up Airbnb and said we're not staying with a host like this you know who's literally trying to do the minimum possible to um, you know get away with us staying there and so we demanded a full refund and Airbnb were amazing. And they said, right, we'll put that through to the team and we're going to get on that for you now and open a full case with the host. And so Anna and I went back to start packing up our luggage and get it out of the house. And we, we were at, at that moment on the phone to Airbnb when this guy comes along and we thought, that looks like it might be the host of the Airbnb. And one of the things we'd pointed out was that the... Um, what we call in the UK the wheelie bins, like the, the trash cans, whatever you, you call it out here, they were chock full with rubbish and the bin men had, had come that morning and the host hadn't said to us, oh, the bins need to go out. So now you've got whatever it is, a week, two weeks worth of full bins. They didn't have lids on them. And one of the reasons that you get fleas and nasties in the garden here in this temperature is rodents come to open bins that have got fleas on them and then leave them in the long grass. And we'd made this complaint to Airbnb and this guy's turned up and he's swapping his bins for the neighbor's bins and taking photos of them to upload as evidence that the bins are empty. And so we went and said, hang on, you know, what, what's going on here? We've just sort of filmed you doing this. And the guy was pretty rude and off he stormed, vindicating more than ever our decision to, to just leave this place and just to go. 
So anyway, long story short, Anna and I found ourselves, I think it was probably three in the afternoon now, literally sitting in a car. We've just got our stuff out of this place, Airbnb, like I say, amazing service. Service They gave us a full refund on everything, uh, sorted it all out. They were, again, full of kindness and compassion. But nevertheless, there we are in a situation that 10 years ago, I don't think we would have put ourselves in. A situation where we've got X number of hours now to find accommodation. We need two months, basically, of somewhere to stay. Um, Austin is incredibly popular finding on two on like two hours notice somewhere that you can stay for two months is not a particularly easy thing to do in fact i'm not sure there that there would be any opportunity to do it certainly we couldn't see anywhere but we were just backing ourselves to figure this thing out and so you know what we will figure this out and we'll land up somewhere better and it will be fine it's always fine come on let's sit down let's put together a plan and let's go for it now, the result of all of this was that actually we went online to a group that we're a part of. And again, the power of community these days is incredible if you surround yourself with the right people. And we sort of said, look, this is our story. We're a little bit stuck. Has anyone got any ideas? And some people posted the names of a company that actually fully furnish rent out uh, apartments really cool apartments this one I'm sitting in right now and there's no minimum rental or any of these things and you don't need all your social security number and all this other things that are required for a, even a, a you know the shortest term rental you can usually get would be six months which we don't want and I said look give these people a call because they were amazing to us and we ended up coming and visiting this complex, talking to this company, doing everything in the car, finding all of the new accommodation, finding an amazing Airbnb for the three days that we needed to before we could get into this apartment. And the other kind of message here is that life happens for you and not to you. Now, this is a really, really important phrase that Anna and I lean on all of the time. And I'd recommend that you try it if you haven't heard of this before life happens for you and not to you because that dictates how we view the situations we find ourselves in and how we feel about them because if we say oh god this stuff always happens to me and we go into that victim mentality and oh this airbnb host was you know oh they're terrible they're awful people look what they've done to us you see this word too keeps cropping up instead of what we were saying was that we back ourselves to find something better than this this has happened for us and not to us and we believe that if we make a plan and we go all in and you know maybe it would have been bouncing between airbnb to airbnb for a while but we would end up in a better position this is happening for us and what it meant was that through the entirety of this we actually remained pretty mellow and pretty calm there wasn't a huge spike in anxiety there wasn't a big deal made of this or a massive problem and as i say this is you know this is really um the the tools or rather the perspectives i'm sharing with you are things i've learned that enabled us to get through this the 10 years eight years maybe seven years i don't you know i don't know i don't keep a record of these things I think we would have worried that we couldn't find anywhere when we didn't see anything on Airbnb and we'd have probably stuck it out and we probably would have avoided the confrontation and we'd have ended up pretty miserable and struggling and maybe unhealthy and maybe DJ would have ended up with something nasty because it was a really, really grim place. Um, and we'd have probably felt pretty, oh, worries me. Oh, you know, feeling really sorry for ourselves. But the reverse of that actually happened. In the quest of backing ourselves, we met a whole bunch of kind and compassionate people from the people online to the cleaning crew um, to the new Airbnb owner. 
all the way through to, to uh, the actual Airbnb team themselves, a whole bunch of people who were rooting for us and helping us all the way through this. And even though we were tired and, you know, nowhere, literally, we, we literally sat in the car and joked, my gosh, we're homeless. We're like in this, in this uh, rental like SUV with a sausage dog and like literally you could barely see out of the back of it. It's piled up with all this heavy luggage. And we just sort of sat there and smiled and said, you know what, we'll get through this. This is happening for us. Now... As it is, there was, there's also something else that I'm just going to bolt on to the end of this story, which is that obviously there's now an opportunity for me to leave a review on this property. And I'm going to, but I'm not going to speak from a place of uh, malice and I'm not going to fill the review full of emotion. I'm just going to literally spell out the facts of what happened our encounter with the owner, exactly what the place was like. I mean, we've got a gazillion photos. I'm not sure if I can upload any of them. And the reason for that is coming from a place of kindness and compassion. Now, it's not for me to change the Airbnb host, whether they read the review and think, well, we really ought to sort out our behavior and how we treat our guests. I don't know. And really, that's not for, for me to try and enforce. And that's not why I'm leaving the review. Why I'm going to leave it is out of kindness and compassion to other people who might end up in this Airbnb who, again, would have the same challenges and difficulties that we have got, particularly if it's in its current state, um, and also maybe a version of us that would have rocked up 10 years ago that would have had a really torrid, stressful anxiety filled time now i don't need to leave a review and as i say there's literally no revenge in this whatsoever in fact this is well over a week ago now i've had other things that i've been getting on with but i'm definitely this is sort of next on my list to do so there's no kind of uh, viciousness or malice involved in this there's just no need for that but I think a factual representation of this is kindness to other people to avoid this place if it hasn't been sorted out, you know? So I just wanted to, to bolt that on the end because sometimes there is the need to potentially upset a minority of people in order to do the right thing by the majority. And I don't know whether that's you know, necessarily something that you'll find any value in from the podcast, because I'm, I'm not going to elaborate on it at this time. But I think, again, it maybe comes down to this idea of avoiding conflict. And sometimes we avoid conflict. And actually, we are doing a disservice to other people as a result of doing it. And sometimes the avoidance of that conflict is doing a disservice to the person we've got the conflict with. Maybe it's the need to clear the air or clear the swamp is another terminology. Sometimes actually those uncomfortable conversations are actually the things that you need to have immediately. And Anna and I have a now have a um, a rule inside of the business they call them principles which is if there's a difficult conversation we need to have with someone we'll have it immediately we don't let anything nestle because the further things go down the line usually the worse off it ends up for you and the other person and typically when you have the conversation everyone feels relief and clarity and a, like this amazingness going forwards so sometimes it's about the conflict with the individual in this case it isn't it's embracing the fact that something needs to be said for the greater good. So to summarize, the things that I really wanted to tell you this story for is to, number one, recommend that you don't settle for something that isn't what you truly want. Do back yourself to go all in and figure it out. Back yourself to go for things. If you're sitting on the fence or if you're holding yourself back, maybe um, living into a fear, Back yourself. You've got this. You will figure it out. You will learn immensely from this. And this could be in music. This could apply to uh, labels that you're going to send music to. Maybe you are in a relationship with a label. Perhaps you haven't signed the contract yet. But as Adrian was talking about last week, maybe the communication's not there. Maybe intuitively it just doesn't feel right. But you're holding on to it because you think, oh God, if I lose this, maybe I won't get another release. Or maybe there is that fear of conflict. 
I'd recommend backing yourself to figure it out. Maybe it's a collaboration you're in. Maybe this will come now or further down the line with management and agents and people like that. And certainly it will come up in multiple areas of your life. And as I said at the top of this podcast, often things that don't appear to directly relate to your music and your creativity will be because every strand of your life is intertwined. Your music journey does not exist in a bubble. And there'll certainly be different instances where you'll you'll maybe live into into a fear about how something will work out instead of really shooting for what you know to be right for you and to and to take a chance on something that may well give you the outcome that you really really desire. So the first thing is don't settle, back yourself to figure things out, shoot for what you really believe in. And the second is just that perspective. Life happens to you, uh, sorry, life happens for you and not to you. Whatever happens, you know, there's this, like every cloud has a silver lining, right? It's, It's the same kind of deal. Whatever is happening, we can just remove the idea that this is a cloud and focus on the fact that, okay, maybe this wasn't, this isn't working out as I imagined. And maybe there's going to be more hoops to jump through and more challenges, but embrace it for what it will make of you. Because no matter what, you will grow as a person and you will learn lessons. Now, in our case, we grew, we learned, and simultaneously we ended up in this considerably better environment that had a whole bunch of other benefits that we we didn't think. You know, we've got a a gym on site here, which is amazing. There's hardly any bugger in it ever. So I can just go down there when I want. I've got all the machines to myself. There's a swimming pool. This place acts as proof of residence. So we've been able to get credit cards and all sorts of things we'd have never have got in an Airbnb that we didn't know about. So we've had this amazing outcome attached to this as well. Um, but even if you know it takes a while to get to the outcome you want, you're gonna consistently be growing and learning and you will find new paths and that new um, more learned uh, better version of yourself will be able to shoot for bigger and better things as you go forward as well so those two things are kind of the, the key takeaways that I wanted to share they were really highlighted to us and it pointed out to Anna and I and we're so grateful for the fact that we've grown and we've learned these lessons and as I say I'm certainly not speaking from a place of some kind of finished article it's just this really fascinating for me to note where we were and where we're at now with dealing with these things and how stress-free this was and how we moved through this and we moved through it as a team really really seamlessly and we've ended up with something that's happened definitely for us and not to us no victim mentality just make a plan that well that just happened what are we going to do about it so i do hope that the the story helps i know that when uh, anyone tells me stories these things tend to stick in my mind a great deal um more than perhaps just lessons that that people share that don't have some kind of journey or story attached so i hope these things serve you well uh, i hope you can apply them in any area of your life and certainly in your music and creative journey Uh, So our show notes, finishmoremusic.com forward slash 180. As always, if you've got any stories and any lessons or this resonated with you, I'd love to hear from you. Ping me on Instagram at I am Keith Mills uh, with a DM. I will get back to you. Um, Maybe a little bit slower at the moment just because of the the very nature of something news coming at us kind of every hour at the minute. Another phone call comes in whilst we're trying to build this life together here and we're trying to do things quick. We're not resting on our laurels. So it's life is 100 miles an hour but i promise i will get back to you so i hope you found that useful until next time do take care and happy music making